So in this video, we're gonna show you how to flash your Shelly devices with ESP Home or Tasmodo. And no, we're not gonna be using any soldering irons, no wires, no flashers, no Raspberry Pi exploits, nothing like that. We're gonna just use our web browser and get it done. And also we're gonna show you a little update on how to make that smart garage door opener a little bit easier with the Shelly One. So let's check it out. So I know you may be asking, well, why are you flashing your Shelleys? They already come with APIs or MQTT built straight into the stock firmware. Well, that is true. Well, but I also like to make things all the same. For instance, if you're just familiar with doing a lot of ESP Home, you probably want majority of your devices all listed in your ESP Home dashboard, right? I'm not trying to mix it up and have various pieces and parts and trying to keep up with all the different things that change and whatever. Just want it to be the same. Well, that holds true with the Shelly with me. I like to flash them with Tasmoda and have them all in Tasmoda backup and whatever else you're going to be using, say is like TDM or if you do use Tasmo admin, whatever it is, you have all your ESP devices the same. So why not flash your Shelly devices? Shelly does embrace the developers and even gives the pinouts of all the devices. But that does kind of become a pain because some of the devices have really small pin headers on them that you really need some really small pins and you may even have to strip some Cat5 cabling back and then use some alligator clips and breadboard and it just becomes a big trouble to flash your Shelly devices even though they do have a pin header. And then you even get to some of them, don't even have pin headers out on the case itself, say as the Shelly plug that some people do use and it just makes it really hard to do. So what if you could do those over the air? Well, you can, and it's not using any crazy exploit that possibly may be closed like with Tuya Convert and it's other things. So our good buddy Mark, and I'm just gonna call it Mark because I probably can't pronounce his GitHub username. I'm not even gonna attempt to, I'm gonna butcher it. So it's just gonna be Mark. Well, he made a very simple little procedure that you flash it straight over the web interface with the Shelly device. Now, we, of course, we will leave the link down to the GitHub page as things will evolve. So definitely do check out things as they change. Now, there are a few different ones out here. There's the Shelly 1, Shelly 1 PM, the Plug 2, and 2.5. Now, I know there are a bunch of other Shelly devices and I'm sure they're gonna add some as time moves on. So let's jump into it. It's real easy. I'll show you how to get your first Shelly flashed. And typically, if you do already have them installed in the wall, you don't even have to pull them out. You can just flash them straight from the web interface right there, get them configured and rock and roll. Now we do have a few Shelly devices here. We do have the Shelly 1 EM, the Shelly 1, the Shelly 2.5, the Shelly Dimmer, and yes, I'm in the US and somehow I have this Shelly plug, but maybe we'll flash it. So I have the Shelly 1 PM hooked up. We'll going to move these out the way. And we are using our Cliff Quick Connect, but of course you can power this however you like. I just wanted to power it over mains. And if you're not familiar with this device, it is not powered until I close this door here. So I want to power it over main so I can show that we are flashing this without using the little open pin headers on the device itself. So this is running the stock firmware and is not configured for my Wi-Fi. And I'll show you we're not even going to use the Shelly app because sometimes that Shelly app is not the greatest in my opinion and some other opinions possibly. So we'll go ahead and close the door and we'll open our Wi-Fi and look for the access point for the Shelly. So once you find the access point for that Shelly device, and it's typically gonna be like Shelly with some letters and numbers after it that's unique to your device. Once you connect to that access point, either using your phone or your computer, you'll go ahead and browse to 192.168.33.1 and that will bring up the web interface on the Shelly device itself. 
Now at this point, you'll need to go into internet and security and you're gonna go into Wi-Fi mode client. And we'll go ahead and connect to an existing Wi-Fi network. And we'll go ahead and put in our Wi-Fi name. And then we'll go ahead and connect it to the network. If you'd like to set a static IP address, if you know one that's open, you can go ahead and do that. It may save you the trouble of having to dig for this device on your router. And at this point, the access point will drop and you will need to use your router or whatever gives that IP addresses on your network and find the IP address to the Shelly itself. And once it's on your network, well, it's not too difficult after this. It's pretty simple. So we are using the Shelly 1 PM. We'll go back to Mark's webpage on GitHub and he gives these cool little links here. So with the Shelly 1 PM, we'll go ahead and copy it. Now what you'll do, you'll need to edit the address. You'll notice he has just Shelly IP listed after this HTTP. You'll need to change that to the IP address that the Shelly that's on your network. So you do, we're going to do 10.10.119. Of course, yours will be different. Make sure we're not word wrapping and we'll copy the whole link. Verify it is the right device. And then we'll just paste that into our web browser and we'll go ahead and press enter and you should get a message, something similar to this. And at this point, hurry up and wait. And what are you waiting on? Well, I don't know. Go ahead and make some custom projects at PCB Way while you're waiting on your Shelly device to flash the Tasmoto firmware and get some high quality PCB boards straight to your door. Check them out, PCB Way. And enough with that. So now let's go check out what you wanna look for now is go look for an access point again in your Wi-Fi for Tasmoda. And once you connect to the access point of the Tasmoda device, you need to go to 192.168.4.1 on your web browser, or you can use your phone. And you'll go ahead at this point, do the typical thing, you'll scan for networks. And then we'll go ahead and click on the network that is ours, instead of typing it, and you'll go ahead and put in your password and do make sure before you hit save that you do hit the check mark and check that this is your password. Once you've verified it, you don't need to fill anything else out, leave it default, just hit save and that's it. And of course, just like the Shelly, the way it works, the access point will drop, it'll connect to your network and possibly might use that same exact IP address it had before when it had the Shelly firmware. But if not, go check out your router and find the IP address. And in all its glory, there it is. We didn't do any trickery. We didn't touch the Shelly PM, nothing. It's flashed, all just using mains power. And of course you could have left it in the wall and it would have been perfectly fine to flash it that way. Now, one thing I probably would do, it may not be exactly needed, but it's just one of those safety things. I like to go into the console, go ahead and type reset space, five and what that's going to do is going to erase all the flash memory reset all the settings make sure it's clear except for your wi-fi it's going to set all the defaults and just press enter and it should come back and join your wi-fi and that way you know it's safe it's clear everything there's nothing left over from the shelly firmware so good we're back what I do like to do while we're upgrading this, because of course we're on 8102, is I do like to do a constant ping of the device itself. And I'll just go ahead and slide it behind here. And basically it allows me to watch the device get upgraded because sometimes it will do a double flash. It will automatically flash to minimal and then it will flash the full bin for you all automatically, but just don't mess with it. So the really easy way I find to do that is just do a ping. So go to firmware upgrade. You don't need to change any of this. Just hit start upgrade and that's it. So we'll go ahead and watch the ping and we'll come back when it is done upgrading. And you can see right here, it did one drop and that's doing the flash and then the reboot. It's coming back on the Wi-Fi. And I will wait before I mess with it because you see it went behind and there's no web page, but it's even pinging. Just leave it alone. Don't press the reload button. Watch the ping window. You're gonna see it's gonna drop because it's flashing the second time. There's the other time it's flashing right there. And it did the flash, reboot, picked back up on the Wi-Fi. 
give it a little bit before you start messing with it. And sometimes, just like you saw here, it automatically refreshed the page. But sometimes it may not. You may have to hit refresh on the page. So we'll close this. And now you can see we're on beautiful 8.3.1 of Tasmoto, and we are working and on the console. So for the Shelly 1PM, it's not a built-in module. You will need to go down to configure other and paste in the template. And if you're curious, we will leave some of the template down for easy access down in the description of the video. Paste in the template for the Shelly 1PM, you'll hit activate and we'll go ahead and give it our device name of Shelly 1PM. And that's it. You can see we got our Shelly 1PM configured and it's pretty much the same process for many other Shelly devices. And if you don't know, you're not familiar with Tasmodo, well, we'll leave a link up there somewhere and also down there on where to continue on, on how to configure MQTT and how to add it to Home Assistant, say with Auto Discovery, which is a really good way to do things now that Auto Discovery works great. It's a real simple way without any YAML coding. It just brings it straight into Home Assistant. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and put ESP Home on it, you probably would need to flash the Tasmodo Lite version. Keep in mind, don't flash the Tasmodo Minimal because it does not have access point mode. In case you need to go back to that, you won't want to have that on there. On the console for the ESP Home people, you will need to do a SO78, which is set option 78, space one. That's going to turn off the safety check that prevents you from writing a wrong version of Tasmodo, well, you're writing ESP Home, so you need to turn off that safety check. And the way to do that is with that SO78 Spec 1. So we're gonna go ahead and we will flash our Shelly 1 off camera, and then we're gonna jump in and show you how to make that garage door a little bit easier with no soldering. So you don't have to open yours, but I'm not gonna stop. I've been opening my toys since childhood, so why stop now? So you can see, here's that little jumper. It looks like some of your regular jumpers that if you've been around computers for a while that were on your motherboards, and you just simply pull it off and put it back on, jump it over here for mains AC, over here for DC. So how do we hook this guy up? Well, make sure that you are following the diagram, as I said, we're just gonna use your regular run of the mill type of 12 volt power supply. I probably got this off of a camera. And since we use PoE a lot, I just use this as a 12 volt one amp, probably more amperage than it needs, but it's not gonna hurt it. And I just simply cut the ends off of it. And you'll notice we're not using this soldering iron at all. This is a huge difference. And now for this, with the DC voltage, before you hook it up, I would make sure with your voltmeter, absolutely sure and double check it that you are gonna put the ground to the right terminal and the positive to the right terminal. So real quick for the Shelly one with the smart garage door opener, it's really simple. Of course, you still have the same wires that come over from the button. And if you do have a garage door that has one of those encrypted button things, you could also tie this to a spare garage door opener. It may require a little bit of soldering, but of course you wouldn't be stuck with MyQ or whatever it is. So the wires, they will tie into the zero or O, whatever you want to call it, and the one. These are the two dry contact terminals. And that's going to be to simulate the button push. The black and the red, that's going to be for your 12 volt DC power. I wouldn't suggest doing this setup here with mains AC because then that does mains through this read switch, which is not recommended. And then for the read switch, it ties into the ground, which is the L in this case, and then it ties into the switch to know if the garage door is open or closed. Pretty simple wiring. Again, no soldering, just screw terminals and get it done. So for the configuration of using the Shelly One with the smart garage door settings, it's pretty simple. There's no template for the Shelly One. You simply go to configuration. It's a built-in module. 
you'll go to configure module you'll pick your module type and look for the Shelly one and then we'll go ahead and hit save and we'll go ahead and hit toggle and you should hear the relay click inside the Shelly and the setup is pretty much the same so you just jump over to our blog post it's gonna be the same from the Sunoff SV except for the switch mode now based on how your read switch is you will need to change the switch mode from switch mode 2 to switch mode 1 space 2 and that's what I had to use for our read sensor now if yours is continuing to be backwards you can flip the rule or you can put it back to switch mode 1 space 1 just toggling the way that on and off is for the read sensor for the rest of the commands of course you can do this with a backlog if you know how to And that's it put in all your stuff and you should give it a test and see if it works it should do the pulse time and then turn right back off you know you have everything configured pretty much the same but you're doing a device with no soldering for the smart garage door opener it makes it really simple no crazy soldering to flash anything pin headers nothing just use the screw terminals and over the air flashing and put tasmoto on it cool little feature and I appreciate and definitely drop Mark a note if you can on his GitHub and thank him for his work on this as well. So that's it for this one. Hope you enjoy flashing your Shelly devices. Getting them off that stock firmware. Yeah, I, I know it does have those other features, but I just like open source and having everything the same. And hopefully you do too. And don't forget, give us a like maybe a dislike, comment down below, say whatever you want. Definitely helps things out. Share our video. Hell, you can share our video on the bathroom wall at the truck stop. I don't care. Definitely helps things out, maybe. You never know. But, hey, I really appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. They really help out the channel and bring new products and projects to the channel all the time. I really appreciate it. And that's it for this one. And y'all take care. Yeah.